It's July the 25th, 2014, and we are discussing WIP with the nuclear proctologist.org at Beautiful Girl by Dana. My name is Dana Durmford, and you can get me at the nuclear proctologist.org. I think it's a better bet if you're talking about interviews or radios or anything else. So, WIP. My goodness, have I got us a good one tonight. Ooh, missing sky, standing foot, fix a stupid. Uh, standing foot again, Stephen. Let me see what we got here. Grandma Goldie, Kate's here. Kate's got a link below to the Fukushima Hounds. And there's a chat room for and by the Fukushima Hounds. And Kate made a video. And... Everything else is history after that. She proved her point and herself at the same time. And certainly that video has continued to be uploaded over and over, all over the net. And it lives forever now. That's a very cool thing. And the Fukushima Hounds has many people over there doing that. But we're talking about WIP tonight. And the New York Times. Deep Desert Grave awaits the first load of nuclear waste. And I whipped, they actually shipped it in there before they had the license to take it and took it. A little bit our weekend, but they done it. And here we are today. Here's a quick old keepsake video from forgotten days. These people, children are probably working as the PR firms for whip. Enough exposure to radiation will cause loss of hair. The treatment, if you insist, would be symptomatic. A toupee. Okay, so you settle down. But the condition would only be temporary. Your hair would come back. Same color, same cowling. <laughs> what are you going to do with that one? Oh, I left the cursor and it's chummy over there. Hi, Kevin. Robert. Nuts for Eric. Victory. Mickey, checks and balances, Stephen, DJ, Bezel, Adam, Eric, uh, Bits, 007, Shanikins, Bob, Alex, MSVS, Stacy Anderson, who's a very hard worker and puts a lot of thought, energy, and time into her projects. And so you'll find her link below if you're watching this later. And you can also check Stacy Anderson on YouTube out. And just to try to help always trying to help people um, after two billion and 25 years environmental studies they sneaked the first load on the whip the hell have I spent all that money 256 miles southwest of there the New York Times in LA I guess is it on Monday a federal judge judge in Washington allowed the plant to receive its first shipment but they actually shaped it in before that right without the permits and it says there although although a state permit is still pending for later shipments and then the actual story is they didn't have a permit now we got a lot to cover here tonight and as you can see I got a whole mishmash of just the enticements but I got a lot more than that here and we shouldn't waste any more time uh, because I can be a little the first clip coming up, I better make sure, it was a whip chuck fire, and this one was K-N-O-E, I don't think I showed this one before, this is a very important topic here tonight about whip, and the chuck fire was on February the 6th, and so we'll just run that short clip. A fire has shut down the whip site in Carlsbad, officials say a truck hauling salt caught fire about 11 this morning in an area underground. All employees were quickly evacuated, but several were taken to the hospital for potential smoke inhalation. WIP officials say their emergency plan was put into place immediately. I'll come back to that in a second. So I want you to come down to the third sentence. There's still a lot of smoke and firefighters 
yeah, yeah, are still trying to put the blaze out. What? Firefighters were down there? Hmm. Let me see how this one's going to work here, I wonder. <laughs> what have I got? Well, here's another clip. Oh, KOB? Hang on, folks. Was I keen enough to put that in order? Why would I be keen enough to put anything in order? K-O-B. Now, we know, we know there was no firefighters down there. Why did they say that? Um, let me go back to Deer Clip, actually, haven't I? That's where I should be going. So they played that. And now we come back down to K-O-B. Here we go. KOB is not going to play. Okay, let's go over to the other one. And it's not going to play. Okay. Well, so much for that theory. It never played on my end. I never heard nothing. Let me come back down and look at that for one second. My microphone is on, but theirs is not. Salt truck. Is that number one? Oh, I clicked it. Hang on, folks. Yeah, so one is a salt truck. Let me try that again. I'm Royal Day, an imminent situation going on right now in southern New Mexico at Carlsbad. Emergency response crews have activated an emergency plan at WIP. Here's what we know right now. Shortly after 11 a.m., WIP's emergency operations center was evacuated. They tell us an underground vehicle used to transport salt was on fire in the underground. So far, we know that all personnel are accounted for and have been safely evacuated to the surface. KOET Action 7 News is working on getting every detail on the scary situation from southern New Mexico. We'll see you tonight. Obviously, I played or twisted the wrong one. Oh, well, we'll keep going. I don't know why, because I rendered all that just before it came online, so that should have been... Let me just bear with me. I'm Royal Day, an imminent situation going on in the Mexico at Carlsbad. Emergency. <laughs> 13 were exposed to radiation. I'll do it the old fashioned way. At New Mexico plant. They're okay, because it's like bananas, right? And speaking of bananas, this came out. Now, what is that? Let's look at that one more time. This showed up, and they say officials are reassuring the public they are not in danger after a fire at the WIP isolation pilot plant near Carlsbad. Officials says a truck hauling salt caught fire. Now, why did they evacuate that for nine days from, from a truck fire? Why was that a big panic? So let's keep going. We had Dr. John Nail, and we got a little clip of John coming up. As with everything, it all depends upon the amount. Dr. John Nail, a professor of chemistry at Oklahoma City University, is not very concerned either. And even healthy foods aren't 100 percent healthy. Most people will get more radiation exposure from eating bananas than they ever will from this New Mexico repository site. As with every Homeostasis. Homeostasis is a basic idea in biology, and what it is, is an organism's ability to keep a constant internal balance, no matter what's going on in the environment. So homeostasis, so a banana. So if you eat a banana, you can't get any more. So why did Dr. John Nails, and let's do that one more time for posterity's sakes. 
Dr. John Nails, folks. It all depends upon the amount. Dr. John Nail, a professor of chemistry at Oklahoma City University, is not very concerned either. And even healthy foods aren't 100% healthy. Most people will get more radiation exposure from eating bananas than they ever... Will from the WIP repository. Well, the stuff from WIP was man-made. It's ionized radiated elements and isotopes and particles and atoms and blah, blah, blah. So these are not blah, 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 because these are all give you cancer, even the tiniest one. So he had a chalk fire, and then the radiation now came out like bananas again. And this was a model up on TV. And this actually came up, I think, from Red Dirt. And then the media put it up on their site. Not me, right? I didn't make this up. This is media put that up there. And then KRQE, Channel 13, put it up. And at the same time, they had Dr. John Neal. And then he talks about bananas, right? Try that again. Here's Dr. John Neal. From this New Mexico repository site. As with everything, it all depends upon the amount. Dr. John Nail, a professor of chemistry at Oklahoma City University, is not very concerned either. And even healthy foods aren't 100% healthy. Most people will get more radiation exposure from eating bananas than they ever will from this New Mexico repository site. As with their Most people. Who's he talking about? Like, obviously, the bananas went everywhere. You tell me I'm a little bananas? There's a bananas. There's a banana. I didn't make the banana up. The bananas are everywhere. I didn't cause the bananas to go out there and attack people and pets and animals and goldfish and children on the way to school. Not me, no. So a banana is homeostasis. Homeostasis, it's like a thermostat. It's like cruise control. It's like autopilot. It's like a centrifugal governor, steam engines. Ah! It, in other words, if you, you can't get any more, it regulates it, your body does. And it's the same thing with cruise control. It regulates your car and the thermostat, controls the temperature in your house, and the autopilot drives your boat. And, you know, blah, you know, this is... Why would you mention that? Why would they put somebody up and say that? What are they trying to do to you by saying that to you? Are they trying to teach you about what's going on here? Or are they trying to uh, deceive you? Now, you got to think about that truck fire. How did a truck fire become so dangerous you have to abandon? Now, I can imagine if it was a little tiny mine and everything was tight in there and you couldn't move around, and but it's not like that. It's actually not like that at all where the truck fire, it was a big place, right? This is, um, just hang on a second. Where the hell is that? I import pictures and then when I go live, they're not here. Uh, well, there's one there. This is a half a mile underground, but there's f each of these blocks are football fields. Now, what's important about all of this, before I lose track of everything else, is so it's a half a mile away the truck was right and so let me get that for you it's a half a mile away and that's the wrong one this is what you're thinking anyway they want they, they might be able to put the blame on the heat from a truck fire that occurred inside a whip a half a mile from the barrel and so the barrel, that story there, and how did that end up over there? I don't know. Hang on. What's going on with this computer tonight? So they're saying that a barrel a half a mile away might have had something to do with the truck. Now, if you were a half a mile away and I yelled at you, you couldn't hear me. If you were half a mile away, I can't hit you with a rock. Even if I got a slingshot, I still can't hit you. Even if I got a bow and arrow, because I'm not skilled, 
and I don't have the real gear, just super duper ones might be able to reach you probably, I guess. But the average person couldn't even hit you with a bow and arrow or come close to you or reach you. So I ha it, it, it's, here's the picture again. Because I, like, I might sound like I'm sitting here stuttering my way through it, but no, I'm having a hard time explaining how come people are worried about a truck fire half a mile away. And these truck fires, most of the machine is metal, right? Most of it's metal. And so it's not going to catch anything. It's not going to, like, so think about how much room is inside a whip. Think about that. There's tons of room. If you got one of these trucks on fire, you get on the other side of the truck. And you put the fire out. But we don't, we got no stories from firefighters who fought it. No testimony from the firefighters who fought it. No interviews about it. No pictures from the firefighters. Who fought it? That according, and I'll get that headline up for you. And that was KRQE, right? And you can see the third sentence. Third sentence. We we'll put the blaze, right? The third sentence down. There's still a lot of smoke, and firefighters are trying to put the blaze out. That's January the sixth, or February the sixth, and everybody. Wants to talk about whip and speculate about kitty litter and speculate about um, you know temperatures and stuff like this, but nobody wants to talk about the truck fire that started all this. And like I don't understand it. Like in Canada, when we have a truck fire, we put it out, right? And we tow it. We put it in a yard, like a storage yard in communities. But if it happens at at, at whip, they they got to abandon. 55 football fields, 55 football field caverns, right? 55 football field caverns. Let me get a better picture of that. So if you were 55 football fields away from a truck fire, would you be okay? Would you say, yeah, I'll probably be okay, guys. It's not a big deal. Now, the truck fire released smoke like this for days and days. And that's why they couldn't go back down there and let me get another picture for you so I can imprint what we're talking about here. This is what they claim was a truck fire, but nobody's actually been down and proved it, except for the firefighters, and nobody's actually got testimonies from the firefighters, right? And let me get a better clip of that for you. What have I got here? So officials say a truck hauling salt caught fire at around 11 a.m., and there's still a lot of smoke. And there's still a lot of smoke. And that's the smoke they're talking about. And from a truck fire. That they say looks like this. And that takes nine days. And then they had a radiation release and they didn't have to go back down. Here, I got another clip for you. Let me play a short clip just to distract and break, you know, the excruciating pain your brain must be going through because you can't go down for nine days because of a truck fire. And I know that must rock your senses. It rocks my senses. It offends my senses, actually. And I can find out a clip. I'll just click on it and start playing it. Um, my goodness, you wouldn't believe what, how much. Here we go. Now, the people that got... You know, the people that, um, let me get a clip for you, because you know, can't tell the story without clips, right? Homeostasis stuff. So, 13 people were exposed to radiation at the New Mexico plant. Because that's, that's what makes it so confusing, right? And so here's a clip that explains why they were okay, okay? This will explain why we never heard about them anymore.
So those people have been around americium and plutonium for so long, they have immunity, right? Would that make sense? It does to the WIP PR team out there. And I just wanted to make sure I had everything working there because it's been a rough night for some reason. And when you're doing everything by yourself all the time, it could really catch you off guard. Let's get us back into the rock and roll. And so, americium and plutonium. Now, there's been a hell of a lot of debates about this. We had Dr. John, I'll bring his picture up, Neil, Nail, say that it's like a banana. Okay. Well, listen to the experts at WIP, talk to the community, and here we go. I cracks up every time I see it. So banana boy, which is homeostasis, right? Because a, a banana is what's known as homeostasis. Can't harm you. It's insignificant, normal, everyday, stupid, indigenous, background, radiation. I can fill a building up with bananas and they're not going to get cancer. They go swimming in bananas all day. You're not going to get cancer. Hemorrhoids, maybe. Cancer, no. You're not going to get sick. You're not going to get radiation sickness. Your hair's not going to fall out because you're swimming with bananas or you're living in a room full of bananas. Banana workers all around the world are not getting leukemias and cancers and big tumors and can't get their arms down. And so why do they inject that in there? And why do they say something so preposterous as licking an iPhone charger? Now, we're talking about americium. And so why did it go, hang on, we're talking about americium and plutonium. Now, Dr. John Neal is a chemist. He's not uh, an expert in any of this. But KRQE and uh, the people who dragged this guy up, they got an expert at their fingertip and they used him before. His name is Dr. Raymond Gilmetti. And he's at Loveless. You can see him outside because you can't have uh, reporters inside. <laughs> at Loveless, because Gil Meddy is well known, okay, Gil Meddy has a, an incredible litany in history, about 40 years of carrying out experiments on our favorite little puppies, beagles. He loves beagle dogs in particular, and he gives them alphas and betas, particle emitting, you guessed it, americium, which is what is that rib, and plutonium, but yet they never went and asked him they went and got Banana Man, right? But yet, Dr. Raymond Gilmetti has around 80 peer review academic studies. Here's another one. This is a study from Loveless and its influence of dose rate on survival time. Gee, I wonder what that means. 239 plutonium induces radiation and then these dogs die and they perform autopsies on them. How did they die? Because they gave them... They made them suck in beagles. And then they got, you know, study after studies. This guy was busy for almost 40 years. Here's an optimal DTPA therapy. Da -da 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 -da. How many puppies did you kill there, mister? Oh, let me see. Well, yeah, 144 exposed. These dogs range from 210 to 830 rad. 830 red, 500 red will kill you. They crucified the animals of the bone tumors, 22 originated in the vertebrae, 12 in the humeri, 6 in the pelvis. And your pelvis is making all those white blood cells and uh, stem cells, rather, and um, leukemia cells, and 6 in the miscellaneous lung and flat bones. Most of the tumors were well, you know, just look. The lungs was the organ most invaded because they're beagles and you made them suck it down. And then you watched them die. You sacrificed them, right? He likes hamsters and rats too. 
He's not racist and bigoted when it comes to killing animals, but he loves dogs. He loves killing dogs. Yeah, got to kill them. Kill them all. Dude, they bit me when I was six. I'm going to eradicate the planet so no more children will mess with a dog and make it bite them. He was probably just playing. So, long-term consequences. How come they went and got Dr. Bozo, Nail, from Oklahoma, and instead of getting a local who's been there for 40 years and does interviews, now this interview was about iodine from Fukushima. He said, oh no, there's no jet stream. You can't make it over here, by." Now you got to realize the education this man got. So how come they didn't use him? Just screaming up the puppies, keeping them up asleep? Or keep them up awake at night? I guess we'll never know. But I can guarantee you that the green burst, seen that whip, is back. He's back, folks. And they figured it actually hit around 1,600 degrees in the whip. Now, how would it get up to those temperatures? Was it a truck fire half a mile away from the barrel? Or was it a truck fire? See, are they faking all the radiation? Because I get an echo in my ear. All the radiation to disguise the truck fire. Because you got to realize the people that make trucks, um, they got a lot of money, a lot of influence, a lot of power. They're the only people out there that buys tuxedos on the planet. And they actually have a cure for banana illnesses. And they can, they can cure stuff like that. But, see, truck fires, we didn't know that. The military has actually been using trucks in wars for many years. They have big cannons. They don't show that to you because they're secret weapons. And they can fire like a half a ton to a five ton truck. Uh, they can only fire one at a time. And the guy who drives it into the, the cannons... He says he, he, you know, he he writes his name on the dashboard. We're coming for you, and of course you, you know, that's why we only got because like there used to be sixty percent of land on this planet, and so a lot of people don't know that. And we actually had to get rid of about thirty percent of the land on the, or fifty percent of the land on the planet because of truck fires and trucks used in wars fired from cannons and dropped from planes. They actually have trucks up in satellites orbiting Earth. And they're going to fire the trucks from satellites. And so those trucks will come in at like 7,500 miles an hour and just kinetically destroy things. And everybody say, oh, it was a truck fire. We can't get close enough to find out. We'll come back in 100 years and work on it. That makes more sense. Right? So somebody, like they're coming out and making all this stuff up, but it's about the truck fire. Right, it truly is about the truck fire. Nobody wants to talk about the truck fire. Nobody really wants to say the trucks are the issue. And I, I made video after video about this, and I'm pretty convinced. You know, I was out walking my dog the other night, and I can feel the trucks' beady little eyes down the road. They're staring at me, and but I can hear Buddy snoring through the window. But that truck, that got a mind of its own. It was like one of these days we're gonna. Just catch fire, man, and you're going to lose Canada. Don't worry about it. It's okay for now. We'll keep you worried about the radiation from Fukushima and WIP. Now, you got to realize, I know I'm just making fun, folks, but all that radiation from WIP followed. What you're seeing there, that, 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 that's an actual dispersal model from an institution, and it's designed to look like a banana. That's how sick and twisted and demented your academics are. Like, they're in the know, and they go to university, get a degree so they can be a PR people, and then they get all kinds of other degrees to complement that. And so it's all about scaring you. Now, and then they get into your media, and so homeostasis, let me get back to that for one second. Homeostasis, it's, uh, la 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 la, here we go. Homeostasis, don't ask me for the video, I already played it. And I got no idea where it's to. Now here's another homeostasis. And this is from KRQE, Channel 13, during the whip. And this is what they equated the americium and the plutonium. Right? You remember the americium and the plutonium? Uh, doc, um, peer review academic studies I showed you? 
I got to use, because the headphones got an echo in it, but I got to have it in so I can hear when to cut the video off. So I'm going to play you a video from KRQE. The first known release of radiation from the underground site on February 14th is very serious, but they insist that the radiation levels detected in and around the plant in the last 10 days are no riskier than a dental x-ray or an airline flight. One skeptical... So a dental x-ray or an airline flight? Both of these are homeostasis. Now I know the bootlickers are out there saying they're dangerous and if you fly enough you're going to get cancer. These people need to shut their yaps. And I got one thing to realize that I do take notice, okay? There's very little gets out there that I don't watch and I don't read and I don't aggregate. And that pissed me off when I heard that people are propagating that homeostasis. Like flying in a plane is not going to give you cancer. You don't have jet pilots all over the planet dying of cancer from just radiation from the sun because of the way it's dispersed through the clouds, the way our atmosphere cuts it up. And it's, it's just an excuse to make you stupid. And in dental x-rays is a neutron. It's completely different. When you ingest a particle from WIP, you're getting an x-ray, a dental x-ray, and flying on the plane every minute of your life. 1,440 minutes a day, 365 days a year. Do you want me to do the math on that for you? Let me do the math on it, because sometimes that's what it takes for people to work it all out. We got a chummy, we got zeros. So we're going to do 1,440 minutes in a day times 365 is equal so you're getting half a million x-rays and so in three or four years you're going to have some serious autoimmune deficiency illnesses your body's going to be weak you're going to become lethargic you're going to start getting the tumors because you got these particles in your body and your body's going to attack that constantly it's completely different. An x-ray is an x-ray. A flight is a flight. The people that are up there on the space station are not dropping dead of cancers and tumors when they come down here from the solar radiation, okay? I'm so tired of hearing that out there. It offends me. Dr. Raymond Gilmetti, he showed us what this stuff is like, right? Remember the beagles? I know it's hard to look at. Close your eyes. But mass murderer... And then, so they roll out Dr. John Neal when it comes time to talk about americium and plutonium, right? Instead, why not roll out Dr. Raymond Gilmetti at Loveless in New Mexico, who got 40 years feeding this stuff hand over fist to puppies, beagles, and dogs, and sometimes monkeys, sometimes rats, and sometimes hamsters. Most of his academic peer review studies from Loveless are about killing beagles, right? Optimizing, finding out, and then doing autopsies on them, and giving them up like 830 rads. Do you got any idea what that's like? A dose of that two weeks later, you're dead. You walk by somewhere and get 830 rads. It's not like you got to stay there to die. You're going to die. Like your body, I don't know how to equate it, a good way to equate it to you. It's like taking a bucket of ice cream and putting it out in uh, heat and eventually it melts but then you slow the video down 15 or 20 times and you watch it the ice cream still melted it took longer because you slowed the video down 15 times the speed right well that's what radiation does to you. you you go home you think you're okay you wake up next morning you got no hair on your body you go to see your doctor and you can't make it out of the office and there's 600 helicopter pilots at Chernobyl Helicopter pilots, and they all died of radiation illness. There's 600,000 people went through there, and they only got 15 minutes, 15 seconds on the roof, the first few thousand, because those kind of rads will kill you, see? And that's what Gilmetti was doing, though. He was destroying creatures, not for the greater good, no, to find out how they can get away from pain insurance, to find out how they can get away from being discovered. So they didn't want to kill people with radiation, but only because, not like Fukushima, where they send in the homeless. Think about Chernobyl, they go in for 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 
pick up a piece, throw it off the roof, go home, and never go back to Chernobyl again. In Fukushima, they send in the homeless, and they're not allowed to leave till they're ready to die, till they're bleeding from their orifices. And so I get a little bit hot-headed sometimes, Dana. Yeah, well, if you got the litany and the history of what I read and all those peer-reviewed studies about murder and pets and all, all the other creatures, you'll be a little bit hot over the counter collar sometimes too. Let me come back up to homeostasis and let's come back to whip. Remember what homeostasis is where your body regulates it. It's insignificant, normal, indigenous, everyday encounters with background radiation. It's harmless. The DOE says that data is a potential dose of 1.3 to 4.4 millirems. To give you an idea of what that means, a single chest x-ray will expose a person to 10 millirems. The DOE says the average person in the U.S. gets exposed to more than 600 millirems every year from naturally occurring radiation. They consider this radiation release not at all a danger. Natural occurring. Natural occurring. Right? When they say that to you, they're lying to you. When they say that to you, they're trying to confuse you. When they say that to you, they confuse you. When they say that to you, nobody can have a conversation with you. When they say that to you and you regurgitate it to somebody else, nobody can have a conversation with that person. When somebody comes out and asserts it's real, and you don't look it up yourself and find out that it, this radiation, no matter how small the particles were, they killed the dogs. Go tell Dr. Raymond Gilmetti it's like a background, like an x-ray, or that it's like natural you get every year, which is stupid. Everything on this planet is acclimated to it. I'm getting excited. I'm sorry. Everything on the planet is already acclimated to it. That's why we exist, because we live in harmony to it. The puppies died because it's not, man, it's not normal radiation. Feed the puppy all the bananas you want, he's not going to die. Unless bananas are bad for some stupid reason for dogs. My dog won't eat them. But how is it that I, I'm showing you these peer-reviewed academic studies and there's still people are talking about you know, background radiation. Now, here the media come out, and instead of going getting the expert to talk to them about americium plutonium, they went and got John Neal, Dr. John Neal from Oklahoma, banana head, but yet they come out and lie again. So let's listen to another one about WIP, where they come out and they talk about homeostasis again, right? So homeostasis, and let me jump to the clip. More than 180 employees of Nuclear Waste Partnership, the company that runs WIP for the Department of Energy, were on the job above ground. Okay, we found no uh, uh, detectable contamination on our surface, on our individuals, and everything else on our, on our site. It was only after days of more sophisticated lab tests that human contamination was confirmed. WIP scientists say radiation levels are far below some of those in our everyday lives, like from medical x-rays and natural sources. You can't use natural sources. What did Dr. Raymond Gilmetti teach you tonight? Did he teach you anything? Did you learn anything from those peer-reviewed studies I showed you? Because if you did, you should be upset that they're doing that to you, that they're showing you that stuff. Because that's like a thermostat, it's like cruise control, it's like all autopilot echo. Here's another clip of KRQE coming out talking about natural radiation in the equation of man-made radiation. And man-made radiation killed the puppies. It killed the dogs for 30 years. Nothing changed outside of people continue to come out and say in the media the opposite. They are getting closer now to beginning the exploration of WIP's underground tunnels to find out what happened. Before people are sent below, sensors will be lowered into the mine to see if it's safe. It's thought a roof or wall collapsed on some waste containers and ruptured them. Plans for cleanup and uh, reopening are in the works. So they never cleaned it up. They can't get under the walls, tunnels, and everything are polluted. The stuff down there is not homeostasis, see? That's why they're not back down there. They're back down there because they had not back down there because they had a massive release of bananas. They never had a truck fire, right? They never had no truck fire. There is no truck fire. There was no truck fire. You don't abandon 
a truck fire. We put them out here in Canada. Maybe you should hire Canadians to run your operation down there. If you you got 170 people, are not going to go down in a mine that's got 50 football field sized caverns. If you're on the other side of a football field and there was a truck fire where everything is metal, the only thing you can burn is the tire. And these are massive caverns. These are massive tunnels. These are massive. You get on the other side of the truck, but you've got to take into consideration what the original story was, is that firefighters are still trying to put out the fire, the third sentence down, right? Firefighters are still trying to put out the blaze. Where's the footage? Where's the interviews? Why were they down fighting it? Why didn't they go back down after the fire was out? Because it was a radiation release. And until you start talking about that, until you start injecting that into the conversation, the truth can never come out. You're going to spend your entire life ninnying yourselves about kitty litter. About kitty litter. And where's that stupid headline to from crazy people? Uh, I'll find it. Give me a second. Because you got the whip studies. Don't click on stuff, Dana. Everything goes bad. Hang on, folks. Truck fire, U.S. Department of Energy. Where's Buddy Toe? It's homeostasis. I can't find my headlines. Here we go. Another hypothesis would put the blame on a heat from a truck fire inside of the whip a half a mile from the barrel. A half a mile from the barrel. You don't have to be very smart. You don't have to be very intelligent that each one of these blocks is 300 feet by 120 feet. If you're 300 feet away from a truck fire, I can assure you you're not worried about it even though you're half a mile underground. I can assure you the air vents and the airflow down there can deal with 60 truck fires. If you're on the other side of it, you're fine. If you're on that side of it, the truck, the fire all goes up into the ventilation shafts. Like, I'll show you the picture again because it defies explanations of... she got to start wearing my glasses, Dana, because I can't see shit. Do you got any idea how big of a truck fire you need to create that much smoke constantly for days? Do you got any idea how big a truck fire has to be to abandon a mine for nine days? And you got any idea how lucky they are that they had a radiation release and didn't have to go down there? Because obviously they, these are the, the, cowardly, the cowardly things on planet that can't go down and fight a truck fire. Even though the firemen allegedly were down fighting truck fire, we got no pictures, no interviews. Because they weren't down there fighting the truck fire. Or that'd be in the media all the time. They have pictures of it. They wouldn't shut up about it. Instead we got smoke coming out. And this is such a rare one. But it was up in all the media like I showed you. Right? Like here's a... Um, KOB Channel 4 showing truck fire. There's a better shot on a truck fire. Here's the crazies, you know, the crazies saying, you know, that the second sentence down, uh, the last sentence down, there's still a lot of smoke and firefighters are still trying to put the blaze out. But everybody shut up after that because they might have to produce some of that. And it's because that's when the radiation release happened was on the 6th, not the 14th. Right? The sixth. When all that smoke in the back of me, <laughs> all that smoke back there, see that? You know what that is? That's radiation. You know what the bananas is? That's your radioactive fallout. Do you know what? It didn't just go in that little circumference that you see there. It, it eventually, because for nine days they never told you about it, so the wind spread that all over your neighborhood. All over that whole Albuquerque and everywhere else. And so they have to hide it from you. He didn't tell you because he knew you'd get it through the Geiger counter and everybody be like, holy shit, it's all gone to hell, folks. And what they're going to do now, they can't get back down there because the walls, all the buildings, 
You see all that smoke coming out of that building? They're not going back in that building. They never went back, back down there after the truck fire, I can assure you. They never went in that building either after the truck fire. Because it's full of radiation. And they're playing you for a sucker. They're playing you for idiots. Oh, I'll have another meeting at WIP at the town site and you will answer your questions with the best spin money can buy. With the lowest form of life that money can buy. I love them with the beautiful ties and all the, the all the politeness and all the old political correctness they pull off on you. And then at the end of the night they look at you and they treat you like a moron. They say... You're a cancer is what you are, Williams. You creepy creep. She's creepy, man. That's creepy. That's cold. That's cold. You can't get much colder than that. You can't get more wickeder than that. You can't get much more dark than what she is. Treating everybody like they're an idiot. Licking your iPhone charger is actually homeostasis, folks. Right? They can't help themselves. They can't. They cannot do it. They have to do it. That's why they exist. They exist to lie to you. They exist to manipulate you. They exist to pull the wool over your eyes and treat you like an idiot. Walking in the sunshine, dental x-rays, bananas, are all background homeostasis. They're all regulated. Everything on the planet is acclimated to it and has been since the beginning of time. And so there's no solution outside of education and awareness and then holding them accountable. You're, you have to, to hold them accountable. When they say that, you have to stop them and get that on video and you have to put it out there. If they got an education, you have to go after the institution. You have to get upset. You have to fight back. You don't evacuate, you know, 55 football fields, 300 feet by 120 feet each because of a truck fire. For nine days. In Canada we put the fire out. And we work around it. So does everybody else on the planet. Except for a whip. Because it wasn't a truck fire. This is when they put the roll out to try to fool you. There was no robots down there. No people have been down there before or since. And they got no pictures. You won't see the firefighters in the interview. You ain't going to see the firefighters. Mentioned again. Right? It was only what I'm showing you tonight. This is why you're seeing it. Here, I'll bring up that little duty doohickey again for you so you can enjoy it. That KRQE channel bootlicking 13. Go over salt truck, catches fire at the whip plant, go over and read it yourself. I'm not making it up. Here it is over there, right? So, Carol's bad. The, the last sentence there's still a lot of smoke. See the smoke over my shoulder? That's what they're talking about. That went on for days and days. Salt doesn't burn like that. Why do you think they put it down there in the first place? They were putting down wicked stuff from Hanford and from Los Alamos and the other crazies that you got out there. And they weren't telling you. And they knew if it went caboodle, you'd never get back down there again. And so what they, they're trying to do at WIP now is keep the money rolling in and try to keep their jobs and try to contain what's going on and they got to do that by lying and murdering everybody around them because you don't kill them in a couple of years right away they, it takes a few years but quite a few people probably did drop dead of heart attacks around there you got no idea how malicious and wicked and maniacal what you're dealing with anybody that would say walking in the sunshine is truly a traitor of humanity anybody that say licking an iphone is an absolute traitor it's a betrayal to all the people that went there and put their faith in them. It's a betrayal to their parents, it's a betrayal to their children, to their friends, to their families, to their own dignity, to their own soul. It's another betrayal. You have to deal with it. 
You can't keep poisoning everybody because, oh, it takes five or ten years to kill them. We're in a, we'll be okay. We'll have our money. We'll have a bit of our pension salted away. Yeah, we tricked them. The children are sick. What odds? We got our money. We'll go somewhere else. Nobody knows what we've done. We'll get promotions because we're part of the good old team now. They'll throw you under the bus first chance they get. Make no mistake. Because you ain't power. You ain't got no authority. You ain't got no clout with them. They'll use you again and again. Your entire history will be how to go out and cover up the mass murdering machine. How can you do that? How can you look yourself in the mirror every morning for a paycheck and sell out all the humanity for that? What's wrong with you? What did the world ever do to you to deserve you? Why are you at WIP telling people lies? Why did KRQE Channel 13 tell you all those lies? Like I showed you tonight. Why? Because that's what they do. They don't care about you. They don't care about you. They hate everything about you. They despise you. They went and got the education. And every day they sell out. And they sell their souls. And you're just another story that came across their desk. And they package it up and tricked every one of you. And then the people who shows up every week are not showing up because it's like bananas. They're showing up because they know that radiation. If you find out about that, the truck fire was actually the radiation release and that they knew and they couldn't they couldn't close it down because it would blow up the whole site and they had to vent it and that they vented it on purpose into your community and disguised it and rolled out Dr. John Neal to tell you it was like bananas and then they came out immediately with the studies with a banana in it instead of going down and getting Dr. Raymond Gilmetty and he knows a thing or two about plutonium amaurice he'll tell you what he killed a doggies mostly, though. He's notorious for being a mass puppy murdering, puppy hating, cruel son of a gun boy, that filler. Well, here you go, folks. Let me come in and say goodnight to everybody. That's the whole shit and caboodle. We got it all in one package. But the whole point is, you're being taken for a ride. You're being taken for a ride. And interesting, all the pictures, the extra pictures that I had imported when I went to start tonight, are not here. It's the damnest thing I've ever saw. I must have screwed up, I guess. So I apologize. Hi, Sydney. Yes, uh, her, cesium 137 can attack your heart right away, Sydney. They can drop you right dead of a heart attack. Good night, Stacy. Thank you for what you're doing, honey. John Townsend, mom's the word. Ellie, lunar, nep killer. Hi, everybody. Sydney. Standing for it, Lori. Hi, Lori. Mr. I can see. Mela. Hi. Ronald. Amters. Hi. Hugs. Shani Gens. Radioactive Banana. Good night, everybody. I had a long day, but I'm going to be going full steam ahead again tomorrow. I'm finally getting everything together. I'll be in a 28-foot in a Zodiac with twin 150s on it next week. And I'll be putting that footage up here on, on the net for you. And we'll have a good chat about that. We'll go out and check for starfish and a few other things. And that's the first time I'll go back on the ocean in 15 years. Don't say I don't do nothing for you. As long as the weather is good, I'm going to go do it. And Grandma Goalie, I'm just trying to scroll up and say goodnight to everybody. Make sure I catch a few extra people. Amter, Sydney, Lunar, Robert, uh, MSVS. Okay, here we go. Let me scroll back down. And I'll catch anybody last coming in here. Hi, Big Sky Dream. Yeah, thank you. Kate. You can find links below to Kate, the Fukushima Hounds site. Adam. Sydney, Mr. I Can See. Stacy, yeah, hugs for you too, honey. Ronald, hugs, folks. Ellie, Sydney, Mickey. Uh, Standing Foot Hippie. Good night. Nuts for Art. Thank you. Harry Monk. Robert, Closet, uh, Punisher, Fix It Stupid. Mom's the word. Good night, everybody. We'll call her a night. 